Hey, everybody. How's it going? Today, I'd like to talk about what happened to my good friend and colleague, Jessa Jones, while driving her Tesla Model 3 that had autopilot engaged. She also has the full self-driving package that smashed into a deer with autopilot enabled. Her video is on her channel, iPad Rehab, and I will link to it down below. I'd like to discuss a little bit of my experience using autopilot, a little bit of my experience driving in areas that are filled with deers, admittedly as an inexperienced driver. I just got my driver's license in March of this year, and uh, some of the problems that people have had with autopilot and why I find it particularly interesting that this is the direction in which autopilot failed, and I'd also like to just talk a little bit about the way that this feature is advertised. So the first thing I want to do is actually go over the incident as it occurred. So we have dash cam footage here from her car. All Teslas have a little USB drive in the in the glove box and it is recording from all of the cameras. So let's take a look at that. So she's driving along on one of these roads late at night and you can see right over here that's the deer. And uh, the deer is not in the road yet and she's getting closer the deer finally is making a run for it he has crossed over the line and ow no more deer so just to play that one more time the deer is behind the line it's not stopping and then it just says oh look a car coming let me just smash right into that car now i can't tell you how far away she was from the deer when the deer finally crossed over the line because they don't have any of those segmented lines in the road here as they do in other areas many people don't know this but there are those lines on the road those white lines that you see on a lot of different roads and those lines are about 10 feet in length and the length between those lines is 30 feet in length you can use those lines to calculate how fast the car is going if you don't have a speedometer on screen and you can also use it to calculate the distance between the car and something else. I can't tell you what speed Jessa was going, nor can I tell you how far the car was from the deer when it hit it. Now, I'm surprised that autopilot failed in this way. As someone who has used autopilot before and seen its failure, its failure is typically not that it misses something. Its failure, at least in my experience with different Teslas that I've tried in the past, have been that it does the opposite, where it does something called phantom braking where it thinks something is in front of it when nothing is actually in front of it and it has phantom braking. So when I first tried a Tesla with autopilot, I had my foot hovering over the brake expecting that it wasn't going to stop, but that was actually incorrect. I should have had my foot hovering over the accelerator because what it'll do, and people theorize this is because of the way radar works and just issues with the data it gets from radar, It'll think something's in front of it, and then it'll try to stop immediately, and you need to correct it by smashing on the accelerator so that the car behind you doesn't rear-end you. If you're going 60 miles an hour on the highway, stopping short is a really bad thing, particularly if the person behind you is tailgating you, as 99% of the drivers in this city full of assholes called New York City tend to do. So this is really surprising to me that, again, it, this really does seem to be biased in my experience towards always stopping when it sees or even remotely thinks something may be in front of it for it to not tell that there was a deer here. There was uh, several posts and comments in Jess's video feed saying, you know, this was the most easily preventable deer accident because you could see the deer from quite far away. It's not like he came galloping at full speed. He was walking pretty slowly, and you could tell that he wasn't stopping his pace, and then it goes over here. Now, I don't think once you're over here that there's any chance of you stopping for the deer. Let me just talk about my experience with deer. I don't, like, once you're at this point, you're, that, that deer is done for. If you're on a road with a 50 or 60 mile an hour speed limit, perhaps those in the, in the comment section who have more experience driving or who drive higher in vehicles can let me know if it's possible to stop. Uh, I would imagine that once you're over here, the, the chances of you, st or over there, the chances of you actually stopping short are fairly low. If, if your car is even able to stop short, um, even if you actually do notice the deer at that point, is your car even actually able to stop short with that type of distance? What I do on these roads is when I see the deer over here, I go from 50 miles an hour to 45 to 40 to 35 to 30. Typically on the roads that I've been on that have deer like this late at night, they're not roads like what you have 
in New York City where there's always someone behind you all the time who's going to honk the moment you go less than five miles an hour above the speed limit. When I was driving through Jess's area, there were a lot of dead deer on the road, so I figured, okay, I should be vigilant for this. And when I see a deer... I slowed down. There was nobody behind me on this road. Since there was nobody behind me on this road, I am not bothering anybody if I'm going 30 and a 50. So I slowed down because I know what that deer is going to do. And when I went to visit Jessa, I was driving right down this very same road and a deer stopped right over there. So I went 30 miles an hour. It started to go into the street. So then I stopped. And then I waited for about two seconds, put my hazard lights on. I stopped for the deer. And then the moment I went to put my foot in the accelerator, he tried to jump in front of my car again. Like, really, you dumb animal. And then I stopped again, and then I yelled at it, and then I played some heavy metal music out the window, and I honked, and then he finally ran across the road, and then I went back to, to driving. But it is fairly easy to hit deer because they have this thing where they really do appear to love jumping in front of your vehicle. They love jumping in front of the car. Where Jessa lives, I would imagine she's probably the only person that actually even owns a Tesla. When I visited her, everything I saw was a Dodge pickup truck, a Ford F-150, a Chevy Silverado. It was it was a bunch of pickup trucks. It was very few people had sedans and even fewer people that in that particular area had Teslas. The only Tesla I saw was Jess's. So all those dead deer that I saw on the side of the road when I was driving up there, I imagine were not people that were killing deer because of autopilot. These were normal, average, everyday people driving their car like normal, average, everyday people killing the deer. Now, we can argue over how good the average, everyday driver in New York actually is, but I did see a lot of comments in that thread saying, autopilot should be made illegal. This is horrible. Look at what it did. When at the end of the day, even drivers that do not have autopilot in their car, that are not using it, that are driving on their own, are killing a lot of deer. I don't think all those deer on the side of the road were killed by Teslas where she lives. Maybe that argument could be made in an area where everybody's buying an electric car, but n not there. That's mostly F-150s and Silverados that I saw while I was, while I, I was up there. And the thing, that, uh, but the thing that, that gets me is that a car that, that has, on numerous occasions, just tried to stop short on a highway when I was traveling 60 to 70 miles an hour, when there's nothing in front of it, just because it thinks something may be in front of it, doesn't stop when there's an actual deer that you can tell is continuing its path onto the road. So like once it's made its way over here, at this point, I think the car should have at least tried to slow down with autopilot engaged, and it did not. Which then, you know, again, many people will say you should be paying attention. You should be paying attention. It's your fault. And, uh, you know, I do believe in personal responsibility and accountability for the driver. Absolutely. At the same time, Jessa has made an interesting argument, which is that our brain is designed to filter out information that it deems unnecessary. And if you're driving for one or two or four or eight hours and the car is doing all the work for you, at some point, due to the way your brain works, you're not going to be able to pay attention the same way that you otherwise would unless you were spending that entire time paranoid saying, I know this is going to crash, I know this is going to crash, I know this is going to crash. In order for you to actually use autopilot, you need to, at some extent, trust the vehicle. You need to have some level of trust in it or you're going to be panicked the entire time. And once you get yourself into that trustful state, even if you have your hands on your wheel, even if you're watching, it's not the same as if you're driving without autopilot on. And what gets me in particular is when people will say, uh, you know, this is not, you know, autopilot's fault in any way, shape or form. This is just a beta. They should know they have to pay attention at all times. The thing that gets me about it is the way it is advertised. So when you just like, go to Tesla's website, check out a Model 3, when you scroll down, full self-driving capability, add to cart. Like, full self-driving capability. Now, if they called it safety assist, that would be one thing. If they called it, you know, semi-self-driving capability, then again, you know, okay, fine. But they, they went out of their way to call it full self-driving capability. And the reason they go out of their way to call it full self-driving capability is because, and I'm just going to go out on a limb here, I'm going to take a wild guess that if it was not full self-driving capability, you'd probably have a lesser chance of getting 10000 bucks out of everybody that decides to buy this option. You know, semi or maybe you're in the future self-driving capability, somebody may pay 500 bucks for that, maybe 2000 They ain't going to pay 10 k for that. The 10 k really comes from calling it something 
that it is not. Now, they do have this little disclaimer over here that currently enable features require active driver supervision and do not make the vehicle autonomous, blah, 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 blah. And of course, that is going to be the small print over here. The small print is going to be the cover your ass. The big, bold print at the top that's actually going to sell you is calling it full self-driving. And you could call it anything else, but that's what they call it. Full. So, it, you know, it, if I call something a full logic board repair, but two of your USB ports don't work, it only works on a charger, not on the battery, and your webcam only works if you, uh, I don't know, if you have Bluetooth enabled. That's just... It's not a full logic board repair. Like for me to use that word full, there is a real, uh, there is something to that, which is why I titled this video uh, Full Self Driving Zero Accountability. Because if it wasn't for that word full, then I probably wouldn't give Tesla as much shit as I give them. And I'm not someone who thinks that this should be illegal. I'm not someone that thinks that nobody should ever use this feature. I'm just saying that the way that they word this, in my opinion, is weaselly and bullshit. When you get full self-driving, you're not actually getting full self-driving. That's the other thing. What you're getting is the opportunity to, at some point in time, apply for the full self-driving beta, which is when you actually see the word beta, which is what this is, by the way. The word beta does not appear over here. This, the word beta is just not here. When you actually pay for full self-driving capability, that's not what you get. You get navigate on autopilot which allows the, the car to make lane changes and then make exits on the highway for you. But once you actually get to a town or a city, it's not doing any driving for you whatsoever unless you have full self-driving beta, which A, you may not be eligible for after, pay, after you pay $10,000, and B, is a fucking beta, and the word beta does not show up on this webpage. And make no mistake, that is what this is, a beta. This is more beta than the people posting in Rich Rebuilds' comment section. You get auto lane change, which works well. You get auto park, which is an absolute and utter meme. This shit barely ever works at all, even when a parking lot with no other cars. You get summon, which is a semi-meme. You get the full self-driving computer, which really does kind of imply that a computer is going to be fully self-driving for you. And you get traffic light and stop sign control, which is uh, iffy at best. I would have no problem with this feature being marketed as semi-self-driving or uh, driver assist. And I don't think that this should be made illegal. I just think that the word full self-driving, that we use that word full, is really, really pushing it, really disingenuous and real bullshit. And I know what my comment section is going to be. Lewis, they should have read the fine print. Why didn't they read the fine print? To which I always respond to, why create fine print that corrects the lie in your own advertising why not simply fix your own advertising and not call it something that it is clearly not? I would venture to guess that the average person with this particular deer crash would have been able to spot this and correct it early on. Because, again, the, deer, the times where I've, I've been very, very close to hitting a deer before, both in Brookfield, Wisconsin, and where Jessa is. Luckily, I did not hit the deer, even though I am an inexperienced driver. As I said, I got my license in March of this year. I spent about two or three weeks practicing in a 97 beat-up, broken, surprised the shit even turned on Toyota Corolla. It was a 97 Toyota Corolla that was in horrible, horrible shape. I got a couple of weeks of practice. I took my, I took my, uh, my test, and I passed. But I would not consider myself a highly experienced driver since I don't even have one year under my belt. And I think even I would have seen this shit and stopped. Again, if my car is going to stop, which Teslas frequently do... Everybody who's used autopilot has had an episode of phantom braking and it scared the piss out of you. I know that for a fact. Um, if you've had the experience of it stopping because it thinks it sees something, maybe slow down a little for this. Again, I'm not even saying stop all the way. Maybe slow down a little just for this. Now, there are people that have said, well, it's not autopilot's fault because you're actually supposed to plow through the animal so that you don't create a 20 car pileup on the highway. Point taken. But however, it must also be taken into consideration that this vehicle not only has sensors on all sides, but also has a camera on all sides. This vehicle knows if there's a car behind it. It needs to be able to tell that so that it knows what to do in cases of lane changes. In order for the automatic lane changing to work, it needs to be able to sense that there's a car behind me. And the car is actually so smart when it comes to this that if I tell it to change a lane, 
it's not going to change that lane, even if it's clear, if it sees that the person behind me is going 25 miles above the speed limit and, or tw 30 miles an hour faster than me in the lane next door. It's going to say, you know what? I want to be safe with this. I'm not going to make the lane change right now. I will wait until the speeding dude stops, even though you likely have the clearance to make the lane change. It's smart enough to do that, which means I would imagine it's smart enough to be able to tell, wait a second, there's nobody behind me on this road. There's nobody behind me. So if I slow down a little bit just to check out what this is, that's not going to be the end of the world, which would then uh, give the person behind the steering wheel more time to react and would also give the autopilot system in full driving, self-driving computer more time to react, which it clearly did not. If you're going to stop for no good reason, can you at least stop for a deer? I'm not asking you to stop for a deer when you got 20 cars behind you and someone with a one car following distance, but on an empty road where there's nobody behind you, which was the case here, that would most certainly be something that I, I believe is doable. Again, are you going to be able to stop at this point uh, like when you're right here? That, that's debatable. Like At this point, I don't think there's anything you can do. That deer is done for. But on the side of the road, there is something that can be done. Now, there's also the argument of can you expect the car to tell a deer from a human? If there's a human waiting on the side of the road, you probably don't want autopilot to just stop because it, there's a, every time there is something uh, on the right side of the line. There is many times where there's something on the right side of the line, whether it is a police car that has pulled somebody over or a service vehicle, and you don't want your car to slow down to zero miles an hour automatically every time there's something on the right side of the line. And it may be rather, rather difficult for the vehicle or the AI to be able to tell with this low-resolution bullshit sensor that they're still using in 2021 in spite of it being an expensive vehicle, but I'll save that salt for another video, to be able to tell that that is a deer and not a human from further away like when you're over here i mean that that's a pixel like I, I can tell you that's a deer because i know it's a deer and i'm a human but to an ai like when you have a camera that's barely 720p and you you're working with this like that's a pixel right there and you know it, it's only when you get up here that you can even imagine that being a four-legged creature either way let me know what you think in the comments down below what do you think of this crash what do you think is autopilot's culpability what do you think is tesla's culpability for calling something full self-driving when at best by their own admission in their own fine print this is semi self-driving or safety assist and what do you think of the legality of these features going forward? I personally believe that they should change the way they advertise it, but I am all for these features continuing to exist, even if, uh, again, as Jessa posted in her video, it is impossible to be able to continuously pay attention for long periods of time the, for, due to the way your brain works d if you're going to use this feature. I still think that these features should be allowed, should be able to be used, and not be taken away simply because of accidents like this. And again, we do have lots Lots of people crashing into deer without autopilot if the amount of dead deer on the road near Jessa is any indication. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.